What up everybody, Dylan with Magical Cams. This is part two of the DIY wooden bioactive chameleon vivariums. Uh, if you've not watched the first part on the build of these enclosures, then go ahead and watch that first if that's something that interests you. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. However, part two, this part, is the part where I furnish these enclosures and kind of show uh, different methods in which you can uh, furnish chameleon enclosures, whether it's ones you've built on your own or maybe some of the screen ones and, you know, so on and so forth. So it's been about a few months since I recorded the last video and about a month since I posted it. And since then, these enclosures have done phenomenally. So I don't know if you can tell just based off of the intro to this video versus the intro to the first video, these plants all up here are doing really, really well. And the ones actually down here didn't do so well, so you will see these are a little different. Not this one, but these two are a little different than the ones I'm using in the video. And that is part of the fun of bioactive enclosures is that you get to learn more about plants, what they like, what they don't like. And it's always just something that keeps you on your toes. So you're constantly think, thinking of, you know, how is this environment gonna be better? What plants will work better in this area? so on and so forth. So without further ado, let's get into furnishing these enclosures. All right, so first thing I need to do is do my false bottom. Instead of putting all the hydro balls or the leak in here to where it's gonna cover this drain uh, and, and then pl plug it up and get in this drainage tray, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a different way on how to do this. So there is gonna be water uh, standing in the bottom, but instead of trying to figure out how much water is in here, uh, since the sides are all solid, I just figured this would be a better way to do it. And then I can watch the water level in the drainage tray and uh, use my shop vac to vacuum that out. I went ahead and used some, uh, this is plastic egg crate. It's a light diffuser. And then I went ahead and wrapped some screen around it. Now this is not my idea. I saw this in somebody else's video and uh, I really liked it. So, and this kind of minimizes the amount of hydro balls I have to use and uh, everything like that. So I zip tied it together, put some screen around and then I cut the corners so that this will lay flat in here. And then when I put the, when I put the hydro balls in here, they're not gonna cr crawl in the side, uh, creep in the side right here. So we'll mention that this is, I think, I did two inches on either side so that this was a total of four inches smaller on each or all together um, left to right and back to front i'm getting these flaps down flat as you can see here let me see if i can get this a little closer yeah so you can see here how these are all flat and I didn't make it too high because this lip right or this inside part right here is only four inches tall. So I need to dedicate most of it to the substrate layer, yes. So anyway, so I took, just take this towel and cover up all the holes in the top. And then I take my hydro balls and I put them in the center in the back and the center on all sides. That way I can then push them and kind of use the weight of the hydro balls to hold these flaps down so that the hydro balls don't go underneath it. So the hydro balls don't go underneath it, so. And I just work this around, make it as level as possible with the top of that egg crate. Okay, so once I'm here, I go like this and just kind of brush these guys off and then, just, or even just go like that, but being reckless like that gets underneath. So, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, but this might just be me, me being a perfectionist, but you know what? I'm going to try. So, and then I have some fiberglass window screen, which I'll use over the top of this, just like every other terrarium or vibarium. 
And then this is an inch and a half larger on each side. So a total of three inches bigger, which it, it could be a little smaller, but just want to make sure that it's larger so that the substrate doesn't fall in and want to make sure this whole front lip is covered on right, right in here. And then kind of just tuck these in. And once it's there, I'm going to get my ABG mix and put it in there. So what I do is I get some in the center and then I kind of just work it to the sides and adjust the screen as necessary. So once I get a fair amount in here, I get my spring tail culture. Anyway, so I just get this and I kind of sprinkle it in here. And then since there's some in the bottom, what I do is I get some not tap water, I get RO water. Alternatively, you could just put some water into the spring tail cup and they float, so then you can pour a certain amount, amount, amount. You can pour a certain amount out, but in this case, I just want the whole culture. So this is gonna be pretty, uh, pretty filled with spring tail. So anyway, I just got water and I rinsed out the rest just in case any eggs or anything else is in there. And then I kind of just mix this in and then I proceed adding more ABG mix over that. I take some of this custodian fuel, which has been working out well. This is an Arcadia custodian fuel. It's for the spring tails and isopods. And then what I'll do is I'll just take these pellets and I'll kind of just these pellets and then I'll just sprinkle them everywhere. And then kind of just move, maneuver them, or maneuver the soil so that they kind of get buried underneath. And that's food for them. At least one food source. I'll have multiples in here, like dead leaves and bug burger and everything. I have some zebra isoplots for this guy. I'll show you one of these guys. These guys are really cool. The reason I'm doing this now, here, we'll first look at this guy. Look how cool he is. Yeah, very cool. Anyway, all right, so from there, the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to put the branches and everything in here. The reason I put this in first is because I wanted to make sure that I didn't put too long of branches in here. I didn't want to Put them too long and then have to cut them and remove them or try to work in the bottom uh with the leak and everything once everything was already built in here all the hardscape and everything so next part branches so what i'm going to do is i'm going to attach some branches on these uh going vertically on these ledges so these ones are pretty thick that way there's a good structure this guy, I'm gonna place these in here. And yes, I did catch these, catch them like Pokemon. <laughs> no, I like, uh, went to the local forest and picked these up and then cut them down to size and washed them. So that's why they're perfect. And then what I'll do is come in here with some zip ties. And then this is, I find to be the most challenging part is getting this behind here and then, I don't know if you can see it, but getting this zip tie behind here. So that way, whatever's attached to the zip tie is gonna be, uh, this sledge will take on whatever weight is put on uh, the zip tie, if that makes sense. So getting that behind there, so then like this, and then throw this guy in there like that. If you've ever used dragon ledges, you're familiar with this concept. So there's that. Now that one's hung, and now I need to do the bottom one. Sometimes this doesn't want to work out at the bottom if the fab or if the liner's too dense and together. So I kind of just 
use my finger and try to guide it through a hole. If not, what I'll do is I'll come through the bottom like this and then try to find my way out the top hole that I just put in there like that. Boom. And then bring this guy around, strap the zip tie, make sure it's nice and tight. And boom, now I have one vertical branch. And what this will allow me to do, as you'll see in a moment, is to mount other branches anywhere along this vertical surface. And then the cage is taking on the weight of everything that's attached in there. Now I'll come in, now that these are positioned properly, I don't have to force them to bend them down and get them into place. I'll come back in here and <clears throat> tighten all these. So, now you can see like this, and like that, and then these two are the same. All right, so now, Need to attach the rest of the branches. All right, so kind of come in here and figure out where this is gonna go. And obviously this is too bulky or too, uh, too dense. So I'll just come in here and break some of this off. That way the chameleons can, or the chameleon that's gonna go in here is gonna be able to walk through here and utilize this. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect, just enough to where it's gonna fit in here and allow the chameleon to use it. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. So I need to mount this in two places, this manzanita, and what I'll do is I'll use these vertical branches to do so. So, there's one. And you see, this is why I don't tie them tight at first, because if I tied it really tight, it would want to move and stay forward, so. And if you mount on a smaller piece of branch, on a smaller branch, I don't like to go super tight, because I don't want to snap that tiny branch, or the smaller part of the branch. And what I'll do is I'll come in here with other branches and mount those really well and then mount and then attach them to the the one that has the uh zip tie on the smaller branch if that makes sense you'll see and then i don't really just i don't actually measure these i kind of just get an idea of how big they need to be by holding it up to the cage and then i can figure out where to break it off from there that one's in place. I may want to put another one right there on this side, just because I'm thinking if the camera's walking on it, it's going to be bouncy, so. For example, putting this guy in here. This guy's going to be the UV branch, so uh, about right there. And then take the zip tie, wrap it around, and then like this. And then I like to just put them tight, but not you know, I don't put a whole lot of strength in them quite yet because I want to be able to move this around and make sure that this is properly positioned. And if this one side is really tight, it's going to make maneuvering it and getting it placed correctly uh, pretty difficult. So. I need it. I got my heat branch back here. I don't know if it recorded that. So I'm going to have a basking spot back here. I may put an extra one going the opposite direction just to uh, give options. So let's put this guy in here. And then I can use the, the branches that are already mounted on the these main uh, horse, or these main vertical branches, such as this manzanita. I can use them to mount uh, the, the other branches within here. I don't always have to use the sides. Top's looking good, got my UV branch, got my heat, my basking branches. Um, I also need to think about 
where I'm going to be placing plants. So, for example, I'm going to be using pots like this. So I just need to kind of leave room and I can always add more branches at the end. See if I add branches beforehand and make it too complex, then mounting plants in here, or even just trying to get the plant within the network of branches is gonna to pose to be pretty difficult. And an easy way to get the ones in the back, I'll show you a second, is to, let's see, is to get the zip tie started and then once I have that started, I can put the, insert the branch into it and then tighten. That way you're not trying to pull the branch in place while trying to get the zip head through itself and blah, blah, blah. See, now this middle manzanita is also mounted to the back left vertical branch. So as long as everything's kind of tied together at each point that it intersects, you're gonna have something very fortified and stable. And again, I try, I try not to think about it too much. I don't wanna make it too perfect. I just wanna make sure that there's enough you know, a chameleon were to stand on its back legs and reach its front legs up, uh, then I wanna make sure that they can grab onto something. That's, you know, so it doesn't, everything doesn't need to be super close together, but just enough to where, you know, in my opinion, the chameleon can easily grab onto the next thing without having to look or try too, too hard. I think that may be good ah, for now. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I was feeding the chameleons earlier and uh, I'm not afraid of bugs. It's just, yeah, I was feeding chameleons earlier. I lost a hornworm. I couldn't find it for the life of me. And for the like the last two hours, the chameleon or the, the, the hornworm has been on my shirt and I didn't know. So I just went down to touch my shirt and I touched something cold and squishy and then it like popped and my hand got wet from the guts of the hornworm and it startled me because I wasn't expecting it. I'm not afraid of hornworms and they're not gross to me or nor am I afraid of any other bugs. It's just that was why I reacted that way. Unexpected bug guts. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I think it's pretty good. What I'm going to do now is come in here with my wire clippers and then just clip all these zip ties. Now what I want to do is start thinking about plants. The other ones I've been doing, I've been doing three, so, uh, so I'm try, I try not to put anything under the heat lamp, so I'm going to have all my heat lamps on the right corner. I don't want anything like let's say like back here in the right corner. So we're gonna say I want one about here. So kind of just place these in here and see if I can get them to balance. And if not, that's cool too. All right, anyway, I'm gonna have one right there. Probably have one like right here. And then a third one is going to go somewhere on the left. All right, so these are just empty pots. I usually get them from like extra plants that I use from my, my bioactive vivariums that uh, I took out the pots to uh, plant the plants in the substrate, ABG mix. Um, some places you can even find them, like I know the Ace over here in uh, West LA uh, has these for sale. They're like a buck or a little under a buck. But anyway, so I kind of figure out where I want these, where I want these uh, pots. And then, you know, kind of think about what plants I'm going to have in here. Like the top one is probably going to be a vining plant. So I've put anything that's going to go upward, it's going to grow into the screen and cover a lot of the light. So something that's going to drape downward, act as cover is going to be great, especially over this branch right here. It's going to act as a hiding spot. Uh, so on the right, I could either use a draping plant or like a vining plant. Um, I don't want to use something that's going to get uh, that's going to interfere with the plant that's going to go right here. That's something you need to consider too, is like, is one plant going to strangle up the other? Do I need to keep trimming it? Blah, blah, blah. So here I could use like a wall cover plant. Um, and then back here, what I'll probably end up doing, actually put this guy right here probably, is I'll put a wall cover plant or like maybe like a vining plant, like a, uh, something that will climb up the wall, like a pothos or something. That way this kind of negative space right here gets used and I also have this pot more towards the front 
because if I have it towards the back underneath the one I'm going to put in the top left over there, it's going to get too much shade. And in my experience, it kind of doesn't do well when that happens. So uh, I'm going to get these sleeves attached, these pots that I'm using as sleeves. So what I'll do is I try to figure out, okay, where, where's like two or good, uh, two or three good places to mount them so that I can, so that they won't shift around and, and, uh, and tilt and everything, especially when the chameleon walks on them. So let me see if I can explain this a little better by getting up close. For example, this pot, yeah, I can mount it like, uh, I could probably mount it against like one of these branches or I can even move it back and go against this manzanita. Uh, Based off what I previously said about the shade and everything, I'm thinking we're gonna to want to at least mount it on this branch. And then it needs another place to mount, which I could put it here, which may work. I might end up doing that, but I think the most stable option would be to put a branch underneath right here to support it and also just to anchor it. So take an extra cutting from one of the other manzanita branches that I use, which by the way, if you have any extra branches or anything, save them for this purpose. Even if they're like un, like stubby like this, because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this, and I'll move this up. I'm going to mount this branch right here uh, on the vertical branches right here and right here. And that way this pot can sit here. So and from there, kind of set this in place figure out okay well obviously it's going to mount on the bottom do i have enough holes on the bottom to mount it oh I'll, I'll probably need to make another hole in here so i'll just mark a place where i need to put my hole or drill a hole so that way another zip tie can go through this hole and come out this hole and mount on the bottom right here and then there i'll come and mark okay so i need to figure out where my markings are going to go uh, I'm going to mount it against this vertical branch right here. So I need a zip tie to come around right here. So I'll take my Sharpie and I'll just mark it there. And then I'll try to make like a little arrow or just even mentally note that I need to make a hole to the left since I can't really get back there without uh, accurately, without getting marker on everything. So, so now that I got this, I recommend doing this on a table, this part, but since I'm doing a video, I'm just going to do it right here. So I take my drill, an appropriate size drill bit, drill a hole wherever I have these Sharpie marks. There we go, now it's in focus. And now that I got that, I'll take my zip ties. And I always like to feed these in first because once you get, once you get the pasta in place, it's really hard to add another zip tie. So I always like to insert from the outside first, bring it around the inside and loop it through and then pull it through the outside. So that way it's just gonna wrap around like this and I don't have to worry about trying to zip tie or like pull it through on the inside and yada, yada, yada. So then I know that's gonna go there now I need to insert my other zip tie. Let's go through the outside, through the inside, and then back to the inside to the outside using that hole I made. So now we got one right here. So I hope this makes sense. You'll see it once I uh, get this in here. So I'll try to just get these zip ties started like so. And then that way I can move this around in order to get the I can move the pot around in order to get the zip tie positioned properly around the branch it needs to go around. And then I can come in here and mount that there. And then we'll pull this bottom around tight. And now that's nice and sturdy, so.
Time to insert plants. All right, so I'm gonna start here at the bottom. The reason I'm starting at the bottom is because I wanna have as much space to work in the bottom without having other plants get in the way, so on and so forth. Um, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make this super complex like the glass vivariums I've done just because my hopes is that the females, the gravid females will want to dig in here and I just don't want to overplant it and make it look really nice just for it to get desecrated. So first thing I did was got one of my plants right here, washed off the roots and clean reverse osmosis water. Uh, if you use tap water, make sure you just rinse it in RO water, like a bowl of RO water or distilled water because you don't want all the chemicals and everything in here. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and... And if I need to, I can grab a little bit extra. Throw it in here. Something else too is that they, or they, when they dig, it's, it's theorized that they like to hit something hard, like, you know, maybe like the bottom of the enclosure or laying bin or like the ball of a plant so that's also why I'm putting these in here to kind of you know give them the option is if they want to dig next to the ball of that plant then they can lay egg next to it now I'll probably end up getting some like pilea red tears or something to kind of or maybe some ficus uh pumula or something like that to kind of go over the bottom I was thinking of having the ficus pumula climb up the walls or at least the back it looked really cool so, all right, so before I add the plants up in the branches, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some ficus pumula. This is a vining plant and it's gonna do really well, at least that's my theory and my experience that it will vine up this back wall and maybe on the side walls and everything and just create a background. So uh, with all the plants that I'm putting in here, I will mention that I have washed off the roots and repotted them um, in ABG mix. Or if I'm putting them in the ground, I wash them off and make sure that all the, the soil that came with it and any bugs or anything that are in that soil are, are disposed of. So I the best way to do this is to get the roots at the bottom and then, um, and then hold between your thumb and index finger and then I wanna make sure they're facing the right direction so the darker green portion is on the outside. All right, so you just have to do this, just flip it over so that now the, the fronts of the leaves are facing downward. And then you could use tongs if you want. I always just like using my hands because I feel like I'm too rough with tongs and I always screw it up. So I dig a little hole back there and then come back here with these roots and just kind of put them in here so now that the, it's hard to see i can't get a good camera angle because this cage is narrow but i buried the roots back there and now what i'll do is take some of this floral wire it's a 24 gauge i get the wire in the pliers like this bend it down and pull it up so now there's like a little staple kind of thing and then what I'll do is I'll come in here and figure out, you know, which way is each of these vines going and try to root or mount them in that direction. So then I'll get the, the wire and I'll wrap it around the root. And then since I did use foam in this background, it's easiest to mount into that. It does mount into the... Uh, into the cocoa fiber mat but it slides out pretty easily so and i kind of get it in halfway with the pliers and then pull the pliers out and then push the rest of it in with my finger so there's that Here, all i'm trying to do is just mount these vines up the wall uh, i will add to that this stuff goes very fast so it's better to use a small amount and then let it grow in like this was, uh, this particular plant was one big one in like a, I think it was an eight inch pot. And I divided it. So I got this ficus cumula in three of these, all three of these terrariums that I'm doing, or sorry, vivariums that I'm doing. So 
So yeah, I was saying that this was all one plant. It was 10 bucks. So between three terrariums, that's like what? $3.33.3 .3, or $3.33333. Or dollars. And that's pretty good if you ask me. I like to use lots of plants in mine, so whenever I can divide them up and get a bigger plant and break it down into multiples, it's always a win for me. So that is all set. Now it is time to put in the plants up here. So I was just speaking about dividing plants. And since you're going to be since I recommend you'll be repotting these, uh, you're gonna be pulling the plant out and cleaning the roots. It's really easy to divide it at that point. Like, and you can see that this is like shifting around and that's what I don't want. Use the pliers to pull this tight onto here. A prayer plant. And again, this was one big plant and it was like, 12 bucks and I divided it into three, so four bucks a piece. So when you do things this way, it tends to be cheaper. It just takes the, it's just the time that it takes to divide it. And like I said, if you're cleaning the roots anyway, you're already three quarters of the way there. And you guessed it, this too was a bigger plant that I divided, so. I will say I do like uh, these philodendrons a lot because they're, they're similar to pothos in the fact that they're really hardy and the leaf shape and everything, but they are a lot shallower. So where pothos likes to grow up and down, this just kind of like goes out and down. So it doesn't become so bulky. It just kind of droops down. I just need that guy to grow in and it's going to fill in this space right here. This guy's going to grow up and help fill in this space. and create some hiding spots in there. The last thing though that I need to do is finish the floor over here. I got some uh, Pilea, I think this is Pilea, or no, sorry, it's Peperomia. So this will act as a good ground cover. Come in here and kind of just divide them without desecrating the root systems. and. I'm gonna add some bromeliads here, some Neo Regilia bromeliads, which I really like. They just, they're really cool to me. And then find out where in here I want this guy. So I'm gonna just use cyanoacrylate super glue, some gel super glue, and put it on the base of this guy. And then this stuff is non toxic once cured, so I'm not worried about it hurting anybody. I still didn't get the angle. Sorry about that. So use super glue and then I just use some wire to wrap it around this branch to give it some extra support as I'll go ahead and give it another dab. Get that in there. So I just put globs of super glue around the base of that. So that will stay nice and mounted. And then let's do the next one. Alrighty, so now that this super glue dried, I just need to come in here and take this wire off. Take some of this sphagnum moss and then just put it on where the super glue is at. So that this guy stays nice and hydrated. Kind of fluff it up a little bit. And now that guy will have a moist little base, like a little root. For this last part, I need to install the mister. I already have the misting system in place. I just need to attach the misting head so that this enclosure will get water. So I was originally planning on using the mist king heads, uh, either in the corner, or what I typically do is I'll put a double headed misting assembly on here and then put this in the center front of the cage. So then the both the misters will uh, face different directions. Uh, and then the way I'll do that, since this is meant for corners, I'll just drill new holes here, here, and here. And what I use is number eight half inch stainless steel screws to then mount it up there because the ones that come with the Miss King, since these holes are uh, countersinked, they aren't long enough from the, from the outside. So taking that into account, I couldn't do that on here because what happened was 
and let me see if I can get this, is that when I came up here to put it where I wanted it, you can see that, well, when I mount it to the screen, the wood here, sorry, there's so much glare, but you can see here that if I mount it here, that where this mister goes in, where I'm pointing right here with my pinky is uh, in the way of the wood. So, so I can get a better angle of it. So I would need it to be out to here so it can go through the top. And the way that I worked around that was by getting some corrugated plastic. Now this stuff's cheap. You can get a sheet of it for a few bucks and make as many mist king or mister uh, wedges as you'd like. So took took this guy and then I put it up against a sheet of corrugated plastic, traced around it. And then since I needed some extra length so that this would stick out further than it uh, than it does, is I just added, I think this is like maybe an inch or inch and a quarter, something like that. And then cut my holes out and then drilled some holes in here. So then this, where these holes are at, will be mounted on the screen at the top of the cage. Since I do like them in the center, I'm gonna measure out the center and then approximate where it's gonna go. Doesn't need to be perfect. And I'll take some of these clamps and put one on each side so it can hold it in place when I come in here and put in the screws. Now you can see here that this, this hole for the mister is now on the outside of the, or the inside of the frame. So it's like not actually being blocked. And you can see here that I'm gonna put three screws into that metal frame, that aluminum frame. So I'll come in here and put in my first one. And then I just put pressure on this into this same direction that I'm trying to screw it in until it pierces the aluminum and screws in. All right, so there's that. Now I can take these off. And then what I'll need to do is now pierce the screen so I can put in the misting head. And then get my mister and then just shove it through this hole. And then from there, I'll come up here. Right now that this is inserted, I can put on this nut, hold it in place. And now I can, uh, insert my misting system. I'm testing my UVI, making sure I got three in here. Get a little back further. Up here. Yeah, I got plenty. So, yeah. Just doing that on all three of these enclosures before I add the girls. And then, we're all set. Alrighty, so, it's looking good. Got everything in here, got the lights on in, and you know what, it just needs something. Like a Talanzia. Now, where's a good place to put a Talanzia? Like here maybe, 
No. Ah, I got it. Right there. <laughs> it wouldn't be me if I didn't add something like a skull. Something, something metal. So, <laughs> unnecessary, but hey, you know what? I like it. And if you don't, then I don't care. <laughs> Time for some cams. This is beautiful Akasha. This is a female yellow body blue bar ambilobi. The uh, kind of ambilobi that has the true yellows. Not only yellow when fired up, but always yellow. And she's just gorgeous. And she likes to run up my arm so I can only get really awkward camera angles. All right, so, come on, baby. All righty. So, I'm gonna put her in this if I can, uh, Okay, well, you're gonna do that. I'm gonna open this little chameleon. Alrighty. So, misters are going off. Impeccable timing for, for this. And she already sees it. She's like, oh, hey, let me, let me get up in here. Alright, let's get you on my hand. Come on. Come on, baby. Alrighty. There you are. Ooh, big cage. So she's been in a temporary cage. It's a lot smaller than this. She's been doing well, but I really prefer to have her in here so she's as happy and healthy as possible. So she's gonna do her thing. She's gonna explore. It's crazy how much color she has for a female. Alrighty, oh, she gonna she gonna do some tricks. Okay, I know she's not a dog, <laughs> but is she gonna do tricks? <laughs> so I will mention too. I don't think I said this before. When I got these new heating lamps since I had to get small ones that they fit underneath the UV, uh, I went ahead and put them on a dimmer so I can adjust the temperatures accordingly. And also according to uh, how hot it is once the enclosure kind of gets an ambient temperature and everything. So she's, she's living large right here. She got a mansion, little Akasha tower. So we're gonna let her do her thing and then got a couple more. Alrighty, and next we have the beautiful Callisto. This is an Ankafi female, who's also very, very beautiful. All right, let's get her in here. She's all excited. Yeah, see, that was main, one of the main reasons I did this cocoa fiber, so they could, these girls could climb the sides and if they need to without damaging their nails and. You know, I was originally gonna just leave the white epoxy, but I didn't. You know, I know sometimes they uh, these chameleons like to climb the sides. You know, I didn't want them to grind down their nails or just, you know, try to climb the sides in vain. So she's already, she's already found the heat lamp and she's chilling. She's judgmental look at that look at that judgmental face man it's like i don't know about this i don't know about you i mean you're a human i don't like you but this is pretty sweet it's so judgmental all righty so let her do her thing and we've got one more so next is hecate this girl is quite gorgeous as well. She's a little bit dark right now because I had to pull her out of her other enclosure, but when she's at resting color, she's got oranges and her gular is a bright, bright red orange. And she's just a gorgeous Ankafi female. Sorry, I should have mentioned that first. So let's see what she thinks. Maybe she won't be as judgmental as Callisto was. Don't be getting crazy on me now. There you go. Oh mansion big enclosure she seems happier she's starting to simmer down a little bit 
she's just like, what is this big thing in my face, man? You, you human. Alrighty, so we'll let her do her thing. Let's close this up so I can give you guys a view of what these look like. So, start at the bottom here, and then work our way up. Is that yummy? It's your first soapworm ever, huh? I see you looking at it. Oh, you want it. Oh, yummy. So yummy. So how about you though? Are you gonna swallow that uh, silkworm and maybe get some of these guys? I wonder what she's thinking. It's like, never had a silkworm before. This is interesting. Cause I've only ever had one chameleon not like silkworm and spit them out purposefully. So. I wonder if she's, she doesn't seem to dislike it. She's probably just like, dude, human, don't watch me eat. It's, you're so weird. Let's pretend we're not here. Oh, she still sees me though. Okay, well, there's crickets there if you want them. Oh, she's gonna go for them. She's gonna do it. You know what I mean? We'll fly on the wall. Oh, wow. You got good aim, girly. <laughs> She's like, every time I eat, you just want to record me. I don't understand. I'm just eating. What's so such a big deal about that? <laughs> so for the last, I don't know, a couple minutes, she's just been, she's just been with this one, or this silkworm in her mouth, just kind of wondering what's going on. She has tons of crickets but she's just savoring the silkworm. I don't know why. <laughs> Such a strange little animal you are. So that's it. I hope that all made sense. I, I try to be as descriptive as possible while I was doing it and to to really show you guys how easy it can be to furnish an enclosure if you have the right tools and materials. Uh, but I will say it doesn't need to be perfect. If you think, if you like these, this is based off of many, many, many years of skill of furnishing enclosures. You know, I would say just at least dabble a little bit in how to get the plants mounted up in the middle and the top and so on and so forth. Um, one more thing I will add is really, really happy I went bioactive for these three females because the one behind me, Miss Akasha, is gravid and she's been digging the last few days. I think 
Well, she wasn't digging a second ago, but she may be down there now. So I'm hoping that she'll lay her eggs in the bioactive substrate. I typically use other mixtures of substrate for them, uh, for the females to lay in. So that's exciting. That's a topic for another video though. Anyway, that's it. If you have any questions or you need some guidance on how to furnish your enclosures or what plants to use in your bioactive chameleon vivarium, then go ahead and give me a holler. Uh, on Instagram, it's at Magical Cams. Uh, on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Magical Cams. And then you can also reach out via email. That is magicalcams at gmail.com. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. And we'll see you next time.